And does it ever, you were talking about having your coach for such a significant period of time there. Speaking to other athletes, there's been points in their lives where they've thought about chopping and changing coaches because that level, they want to get to that level so much. Did you ever think about doing that in, in any negative times or was it always the case that this person knows exactly what I'm about, we will get there together in the end? I think because I've been really lucky that the majority, I think every year I've raced under the, my coach now, I've run a PB. So when you're in that situation, you don't really feel the reason to leave because I'm a big believer of it. It's not broke, don't fix it. Um, so because I was always running well and never really ran into problems, I was just chipping away at it. I never really fen- felt the sense to leave. Um, and I know a lot of athletes, they, they do chop and change coaches quite a lot. And then it doesn't always work work out for them and I think in this country the most successful athletes that we've seen um that I can think of like through my generation like Jess Ennis and obviously Dina's doing really well at the moment and they've all been with their coaches since a young age and that can be really beneficial because your coach knows you really really well inside out but then obviously saying that you shouldn't just stick with a coach if things don't feel quite right or if you feel like it's not working for you but I am a big believer if if you feel it's working you shouldn't leave unless it's got to a point where it's not working anymore so if you're getting pbs year on year on year how do you go about that is it a because we always hear in the media how it's 70 percent nutrition 30 percent exercise or whatever the outcome is is that just a, a change in sort of training or is that a change up in your nutrition how do you keep getting from level to level to level I think it's um, a bit of everything, really. So I think for me, the main thing has been changing strength. So when I moved to Loughborough eight years ago, I'd never been in a gym before. Um, I was very, very like skinny, really. And um, each year I've just really, really worked at getting stronger. It doesn't come natural to me, which sounds weird because I am a sprinter. But I feel like I've got really good endurance and stamina. But the strength side is something I struggle with. So every year I've always kind of set myself goals, right, you need to get stronger in this lift, this lift and this lift, and then you'll be kind of stronger overall. And that, I think, definitely has kind of related to my performances on the track. But then saying that, I have always been on top of like my nutrition and my sleep. Um, So, yeah, I think it's just getting something that works for you and doing it really, really consistently. And if you do that, you should see improvements um, year on year. Have you, uh, do you ever, I mean, this is from a personal thing as well. Do you ever think that you can get your nutrition absolutely spot on? You can get your training absolutely spot on. But if you don't get that right amount of sleep, you're completely written off. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's something that I think is very independent to like individual to every athlete. So um, in 2018, I was working um, crazy hours at the same time as doing my athletics career. I had um, a receptionist job. And that year, I just got kind of used to having like five or six hours sleep every night. Um, and still running really well whereas now if I was to get that amount of sleep I would not function that the next day so I think you can kind of almost train your body to do what you're used to and that obviously leads me on to quite a nice one so what what difficulties have you found throughout your career has there been any that sort of stand out um so I think the main one was for my um, when I had a huge seizure when I was younger and um, it wasn't necessarily the diagnosis of epilepsy that made me struggle with everything I think it was more a few years later the the psychological side of of things that um, I had a lot of worry about having another seizure so that that really took away um, a year of my athletics career really because I was I was so worried I wasn't eating or sleeping right I was just really, really anxious that I was going to have another seizure. Um, and that is something that it did take me quite a while to get over. So I'd say that was kind of one of the the big difficulties. Um, and obviously I touched upon working crazy hours in 2018. That that wasn't nice. And the year before I was doing the same. Um, and I think as athletes, we train for like four to five hours every day. And if you've done an eight hour shift before that, 
it's just not it's just not a pretty sight when you get to training you know you're exhausted it's hard to find the motivation so you can kind of physically just get through all the hard stuff but then it's really hard to find the motivation to do the little like one percent as they call it so making sure you're doing all your stretches so that was really difficult and I think um last year I did have a, a a really difficult year in terms of injuries it just felt like everything I did I was just getting injured so I I had a freak accident in the gym where I I, I dropped um 60 kilos on my neck and chipped a bone in my neck so that wasn't fun and I had um a knee injury and um just loads of little niggles that no one really knew what was going on and I think that was just I had the season of my life in 2018 and had made huge jumps. And I think in 2019, my body was just kind of, what have you done to me? Why have you made me run run this fast when I'm not used to it? Um, so it was really just, I think it was just getting used to the fact that I've progressed a lot more and I maybe need to change my training to, to kind of adapt to the, the speeds that I'm running at now. With 200 metres, I I tried to do it when I was at school. Not very successfully, but I tried. I I genuinely think it's the hardest race because it, it obviously with 400, I'm not 400 metres. I'm not taking it out, but it seems like it's sort of like a 70 percent run the whole way around, which is difficult. It's difficult in itself, but 200 metres. I always got to the 100 metre mark, and I was absolutely exhausted. So how how are you able to? How is that just the training methods that you're able to get? Or do you think it's a bit of a innate ability that your muscles are just readied and powered to get to that 200 metre mark and as quick as possible? Yeah, I think for me, I would say the the 200 metres is definitely like genetic or innate because I think. You can have speed, you can have as much speed in the world, but if you haven't got that strength to finish the last 50 metres strong, you kind of, it's it's a very long way for you. Um, and I don't, I think there's training you can do to improve that, but I think you do have to have that naturally. And, and I would say I definitely haven't got the flat speed that some girls who I race have. Um, and I managed to kind of beat them or, or run a lot closer to them than I would in the 100 just from having that strength at the finish which is something I'm really lucky to have and and I do think it's a case of you can you can improve it but you do need to have that natural kind of strength stamina to to your kind of makeup and I do think doing all those long runs with my dad when I was younger might have contributed to that as well.